All right, awesome. And finally, let me put the transcripts on here. There we go. Oh, Wrong one. There we go. Uh oh, I heard an oh man. Hopefully, you're, everything's fine. Oh man, Slack. The troublemaker of the day. There we go. You are here. Whew. All right. Oh, I didn't even know I have three followers on my GitHub. My gosh, that was more than my MySpace account. Ah, oh, okay. Let's do this things, y'all. Welcome back to Launch Code, Coder fam. Basically, I can call you all developers now. You all know your stuff through and through because we are to the point where we get to today talk about Angular, which is taking all of the stuff we have come to know, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and we're going to package it into something new today in part one, of course. So let's kind of figure out this puzzle. Of course, first things first, and I hopefully I don't think I edited all my announcements here, so we might see something weird, but you should all know assignment number five is due today. If it is not a drop assignment, so if it's not completed, don't worry too much, take a deep breath, it's okay. It is a little bit tougher of assignment than it was assignment four, but it also incorporates all that stuff that we should have known and building upon, so make sure you are still there asking those questions, scheduling time with your TAs, myself, you know, a lot of students have been reaching out, so that's great. Just keep going. You're almost there. Assignment number six is a little bit easier. Pinky promise. All right. Continuing on. Tonight, we do have our studio review, as always, at 8 p.m. Feel free to join. It is not mandatory. It will be recorded. And no, it does get pretty late. But if you want to see my smiling face live, you're welcome to be there. All right. And then, oh, if you are done with the number seven or five, so I'm reading through my other messages here from our friend Clark, just making sure. Um, if you are done with assignment number five, feel free to move on to assignment number six. After tonight, you will be able to get into that. You'll at least be able to start reading through it and knowing what to do. They, are, they do have very good instructions for assignment number six, so hopefully there aren't too many knowledge gaps there. But the Angular is what we're gonna be talking with all, all of that. So that is all for my announcements, I believe, for tonight. Any questions before we get started? All right, fantastic. For anybody who joined at the last second when we're going through announcements, and also for the recording, I'm going to be using my, uh, a repository on my GitHub tonight, which is lecture18-angular, for examples. Just a heads up. So before we get into any of that, of course, we start with you all talking to me because I missed all of your lovely voices. How can I get some candy corn? Because I think I made these slides during Halloween, I want to say. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some treats. Apple, oranges, bananas, candy corn, and pineapple. Out of this array, which by the way, does anyone know what this array is technically called? Is it Object? like nest, a nested, nested array? It could be a nested array. You can also go by a two-dimensional two array. Two -dimensional. Well, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So if I wanted to get candy corn, how would I do that? Oh boy. You would do uh, rotation. It's the first index, right? One com <laughs> you would do a double Reach bracket one in, uh, double bracket uh, notation and go uh, I'm hearing all the pieces uh, there. One. <laughs> one. Let's start one, with this. One. What do we know we have to start with if we want to get something out of a variable? The treats. The variable, so. Treats. We know what kind of data type we're dealing with. What kind of data type is this? Array. Array. An array. It might be a two-dimensional array, but it's still an array. So what do we use with arrays to get things out of there? Bracket notation. Index. Very good. So bracket you know treats notation. and bracket notation. So with those pieces, what would be the first part to try getting candy corn out of here? This, this, the second index, so one. Bracket notation one. I love that. Treats, treats bracket, bracket one. Very good. Uh -huh. But this doesn't get us candy corn. If I was the compiler, yeah. I would tell you mm. banana and candy corn in an array. And then one and again. And then there's one. So you need yeah. another Very bracket good. notation. Good. Yeah. Absolutely right. So what we do is a second bracket notation because, again, we're in two dimensions here. If you have a three-dimensional array, which is an array within an array within an array, <laughs> you use three brackets. Typically, most compilers will only want you to go up to a three-dimensional array. When you get to four dimensions, it gets a little iffy. It's because, you know, as us as people, humans here on this three-dimensional plane, we like three dimensions. 
Awesome. So this is how we get it out of this two-dimensional array. One bracket notation of one, and then bracket notation of one with treats as a variable name. Looking at this thing of treats, how do I get candy corn? <clears throat> candy corn. You would still uh, start off with the, uh, the bracket notation. So treats and bracket notation. What goes two. into the bracket notation? Very good. The two. Absolutely right. Because it's the third index. Very, very good. Very good. Dot value. And then it'll be the dot value. Yep. Absolutely right. We are in an array of objects. So I say to treats, it was the array of objects, I want your second index, aka the third entry here. Because I'm going to, as developers, we count from zero to two. Once I have gotten that object out of the array, then I can call to that object with dot notation. So these are looking at Things storing things, our data containers storing data containers. So this is how we can grab that stuff out of these more complex structures. So any questions on that? All right, let's keep on moving then. I see that now everybody's got the cogs going. I love it, all right, let's keep going. Don't break a sweat just yet. Which tag do I choose here? If I wanted to put an input, or if I wanted to input a CSS file into my HTML. That's true. Style, style tag. The script tag. I haven't heard it yet. I link? think it's style. I think it's link. style. Oh, the, yeah. No, it's, it's link to, if you want to link a, a CSS oh, file. Link, okay. Very good. Remember, style tags are only if we wanted to directly style things right in there. Link is how we connect in pre-existing style.css sheet into our HTML using this tag. Now again, these are the hard ones to kind of remember. So that's why I like to just kind of reminisce about it. So let's keep going. What about creating a header for a website? Now you can use a lot of tags, but there's one header very, very, what is it? Yeah, the pointy brackets and header. Header. Absolutely. Very good. Remember, header and head are two very different tags. Head and body are what makes an HTML sheet. Inside of the body, if we want to put a header there, we use the header tag. So always remember that head and header are not the same tag and do something completely different. What if I wanted to create a text box? Input. Very good. That's the input first part. Tag. Comes next. Equal input tag equal to type equal to text. Type equals text. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Absolutely right. Input with our type equal to text. Remember, input can become a lot of different things. It can become a checkbox, a radio box, or a text box. And the only way we can tell it what to do is by putting that type in there. Now you might have noticed that by default it will think it to be a text box, but though it thinks it's going to be a text box by default, that's not always the safest way to do our coding. So make sure we are including that type attribute within that. Awesome. What if I wanted to create a radio button? Type equals radio. You would change the type to radio. Very good. But radio buttons also want a few other attributes. Really, really want them. What other two would we possibly want to include? Options. I'll help you out here. We have our type of radio and our name equal the group name. Remember, radio buttons need to in, in be involved in a group. So it knows if it's on, the other ones cannot be, and vice versa. And the value itself is what's reported when that event occurs. So that actually includes the information about what the radio button was there for. So if you're using a radio button, remember, name the name for the group that your radio buttons are in, and value are two very important attributes to utilize when doing that. Kyle, what's the type for a combo box? Is it select selector or something like that for a, if, if I want a drop down combo box? You want a drop down combo box? Oh gosh. Jody, you're putting me to the test already. Let me think. Uh, I gotta go to the inputs. I believe you can just use, if you, if you want combo box, that's what's throwing me off. I forgot exactly what that was. I thought it was is. selector or something, but I'm not positive. Well, either select, and then I haven't done a combo box in a half second. Let's see. Da, 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 da. That's not what I want. 
example, um, I can see it. I'm gonna look for the W3 schools for that one. Animal box, I don't need that one. I can't find it in the next few seconds. I might have to look at the very end. I want to get you the right one. Yeah, I mean, this is what I'm seeing right here for. I maximize that. Um, it's looking like the ID combo box kind of option. So a data list. So I haven't done, I'm, I'm going to be quite honest. I haven't done a combo box. Combo box, by the way, is the one that if you click the down arrow for anyone who, who wants to recall it, you click the down arrow, you make an option selection and it updates that little drop down area. Select typically will put a box in there. So I would say use select typically, but for combo box, this is a possible application for it. So I, I apologize if this is not exactly correct. I don't have time to test this code, so take this one with a huge grain of salt. But Jody, I do not know combo box off the top of my head. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? It's the combo box thing, like you can choose a state. Like when you input your address, it'll be like state, combo box. Uh, and you just arrow down through the states or, or whatever. And then pick okay. Yeah, yeah, so I, I believe so. There's two that are really, really close to each other. So if we need to, just throw me a direct message and we can talk about it, exactly what you're looking for. Send me a picture and I can maybe get you a better name for it or get me the code for it also. Awesome. All right. Um, but for those typical selects, we aren't really, we don't usually use inputs. Uh, we'll use the select tag if anybody's looking for those selects. All right, last things. What do we wrap our input tags in always? Especially if they're all included together. Angle brackets. Well, yes, correct. Angle brackets to make our tags, but I guess a more uh, a more detailed question: What uh -huh. tag do we wrap them in? Label. Not always or label. Div. Labels, uh, support form. form. Very good. Inputs oh, form, are always yeah, part yeah. of a form. Are always part of a form. So we include a form to wrap those inputs around. So then, when we actually click, maybe that submit button or something. We just send all that data within the form to wherever it needs to go. So we wrap it in a form. Awesome. Let's keep moving on. Again, we've learned a lot in these past few weeks with each other. Every variable has a type. You know this. So which technology do we use on top of JavaScript, sugar-coated, to enforce that typing of our variables? TypeScript. 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 Very good. Everybody remembers TypeScript, right? Yeah, what a fun time. So I wanted to create a variable called snack with the value of M&Ms, by the way, best snack ever. How would I make it? Snack. Snack. Now remember, mm. we're creating a variable, so what word do we always start with before Let's the variable snack. name? Let's snack. Let's snack. Snack. Let's snack. snack. Yeah. We'll can continue on. Olin. 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 Very good, and then? String. Uh, string. Oh, string. Awesome. Uh, and then of course we set it to M&Ms. Look at that. Awesome job, everyone. You all got all of that stuff. I mean, though, this it kind of gets a little tricky with some of that other stuff, two-dimensional arrays, whatever. You still know all the concepts. And those concepts, again, are those building blocks for essentially all the technologies that go out into the world. So maybe you won't know exactly that one technology that you saw maybe on Indeed once or something, or something throws you off because you don't know this certain term. It doesn't matter because you still know the basic building blocks of all those programming. So you have that knowledge to learn whatever that thing might have been when you were doing that search. So don't let that stuff scare you. So that is what we're going to be talking about today, that thing that we get to learn a little bit more about. So before we do that, let's talk about a day in the life of a coder. It's not always Mountain Dew and snacks. So I'm a coder. And we're going to be talking about just building a certain little UI thing, our user interface, thing that's front facing or the client side. Now, of course, maybe I want to work for the Humane Society. So, of course, as always, I got to have my adopt a dog form. So, it's welcome to my form. We've seen this in the past lectures too. We're big in that adoption form again. Now, take a look at this form, really dissect it. That's a UI person's job or UI developer's job, really kind of seeing exactly what's going on in this form. Now, as a user, this looks very simplistic. You need four bits of information, I press the submit button, you do your thing. But it's all about doing that thing or doing your thing. That's the fun part of the developer. So let's go ahead and talk about just these components here. At the top, we have the header. You already know this as the thing that is, always goes at the top, which usually sometimes has navigation, the logo or the business, whatever. In this case, it just says adopt a dog. And of course, at the bottom, we also have the footer. Now, this is also very, very common. Down here, you'll typically see maybe your copyrights. You'll see 
extra links that maybe they didn't want to put at the top, maybe um, the designer's name of the website, something along those lines. That's what footer, uh, footer information will contain. And then we actually have the meat of the application here, the form itself. This is where a lot of the HTML will go, as well as a lot of our other programming. So let's take a little bit deeper dive into what makes this thing tick. Again, we are just talking about the perspective of a developer in everyday life. It's like, great, I have developed this form here. It has a first name, last name, email, and phone number. If we wanted to see the code for this behind the scenes, this might be something it kind of looks like. If you're working with me in lecture 18, Angular, this is kind of the code you're going to be seeing in one of our components. But we won't get to that just yet. So this is the code that I created as a developer. I put blood, sweat, and tears, not maybe not blood, but sweat and tears at least, and at least a Monday or two into writing this code for my users, for my boss, so everyone's happy. But what if one day, on a Monday, of course, because that's when everything goes wrong, your boss comes in, your manager, or your, just your UI designer comes in and says, hey, for this first name here, I don't want it in the text box. I want it just above the text box. Is that something you can do? And of course, as a developer, you take it with a smile and be like, of course, that's something we can do. But just because of that small visual change of putting it right there to there, it might be easy in the physical world doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy in the coding world. So going back to our code here, we have our inputs. The placeholder was what made that stuff appear in the box beforehand. But now they want that first name, also last name, email, and phone number, all instead of being in the text box itself, to be above it. Again, a very small, minuscule change, but also a huge coding ask. Now each of these areas are going to have to change. And this isn't really what a developer always wants to do. We want to be as optimized as possible because again, we are extremely lazy people. We want to make sure our stuff is done fast. Make sure it is to the point and we can continue on to our next thing. So as a developer, if they asked this, I would be kind of, well, just a big sigh if I had to do this all within HTML. Again, just for a side note too, this is a very, very simplistic example. As you can probably just imagine, if anyone had to do their taxes recently, think of all the text box that maybe exist in TurboTax or any other tax forms that you've had. If they're online and your UI designer no longer wants you to put it in the box itself and above it, think of how many forms or how many inputs that poor developer has to go through and change it. Exactly, a ton, and I would cry too. Can't see anyone's faces right now, but if you're like, yeah, I get that. Thank you. Developers have hard jobs, and we want to make it a little bit easier. Basically, we don't want to deal with any of that extra stuff. We don't have to redo a bunch of repetitive work. It's extremely somewhat mindless, in a sense. So that being said, and especially, especially in this kind of example, we introduce a technology to really help us in more ways to carp oh my gosh, I couldn't say this last time either, compartmentalize, basically wrap things that are very common in an application together so they can be edited easier and also reused easier. So let's take a look at this form. Basically what we're looking for is a technology that when I change one thing, I can change all of my things at the same time without having to do extra lines of code. Remember if I have 200 text boxes because I'm dealing with some nice tax forms, so if I do this 200 times, I can do it once and be done. This reusability, this ease of customization and just change is extremely beneficial to a developer's time. In order to do this, we need to have something in place to help us achieve this. That technology, of course, that we're learning today that you already know is Angular. Angular is the technology we're going to be learning more about today in order to really help us simplify HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So what exactly is Angular? Angular is not necessarily a new language that we're learning today. It's a new kind of architecture, a way that or utilizes JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and rearranges it in order to help us create websites that are more optimized 
and possibly in a sense more simplistic to develop once we understand the technology. So this is the part where I say, hopefully everyone has Angular installed. If you don't, completely fine. Remember, this is all just recorded. We can go back there. I heard there were some issues getting Angular 8.2.2 uh, .2 on your machines. If you have 8.5, that is going to be okay. If anyone sees any issues, just let me know. Um, direct message me if you have any issues there, but that's what we're gonna be using today. So, and let me do that too. I need to get some other stuff that I didn't do before lecture. There we go. So double check that you have Angular on your machine. If you want to go ahead and type ng dash dash version. That will go ahead and display all of the information about that. Oh no, no, that is not okay. Oh. Let's see. Maybe if I can type, there we go, ng dash dash version, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and blow that up just a little bit. I'm gonna do my fancy new trick that you all taught me. Let's see if I get it right. Ah, oh, there it is, look at that. Neat, might have to minimize that a little bit if I can start getting a lot of stuff on here, but ng dash dash version, that will confirm or deny that you have Angular on your machine. All right, so let's go ahead and start utilizing Angular. In order to do that too, one more thing I forgot to mention. Well, I did mention it, but actually do. What I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and clone this. So I'm gonna go and copy my code off of lecture18-angular, copy that with the code, come down here, of course I CD into my desktop, then my LC, and then and here's where I'm keeping all my launch code projects. What I'm gonna do is say git clone, paste that link in there, and press enter. That's how we clone things onto our machine. Awesome, there we go. And last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Visual Studio code. if it wants to go. Oh, it's because everything had to shut down on my computer, of course. Give me one second here for this to go. If anyone has any questions up at this point, feel free to shout them out while I'm getting this last stuff finished up. I haven't really saw anything about Angular, so I can't really answer too many questions about Angular just yet, but if anyone has any questions at this point. Okay. Sorry about that, I have a few windows of Visual Studio Code open for you. Oh, I think I heard something. Yes. Can you check the version again? I'm sorry, you were breaking up a little bit there. Can you say that again? Oh, how do you check the version? Um, what do you type into the terminal to For sure. find your version of Angular? For sure. Type in N as in Nancy, G as in Greg, space, dash, dash, version. Sir. Say that again. N as in Nancy, G as in Greg, <laughs> space, dash, dash, version. Awesome. Great, thank you. Absolutely. So what I have is a pre-existing Angular project here, and that's what we're gonna be working with today. In order to create a new one, what you'll wanna do is type in ng space new space your actual, excuse me, your project name, whatever you wanna call it, and we'll create a project for you. That's what I did beforehand to get this thing started. So just letting you all know. That's the one thing I won't be showing today, but what it does is just creates a project. It takes a few seconds, so that's why I'm kind of saving us that time there. All right, so we have our project on our machine. Let's actually start diving into this thing. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about Angular. And I'm gonna get this stuff out of my way as well. Uh, get my slap back, there we go. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and bring back that code that we were talking about previously. So we have our form here, we have those four inputs. So we have four inputs that are text fields in this example, and then a submit button at the very bottom. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what we're gonna exactly do and how Angular can even help with this situation. Because remember, our UI person, our boss came in and says, I want those first names. I want those labels above my inputs, not inside of that box. Sounds good. So let's go ahead and take it and look at our form our page and more of a compar uh, and more of a component kind of look. Again, like these building blocks, these Legos, almost like puzzle pieces. First things first, we have that header here. The header again is just one piece that we have up there that displays adopt the dog or whatever you want to do. 
And then underneath of it, we have the actual form itself. So inside of the form, we have multiple inputs. Remember, inside of the form, we have multiple bits of pieces of information, these little input blocks. So if we can think about it more of a, again, more of a Lego base, more of these bricks, we can think about these inputs as things called components. So today we're gonna to be learning a little bit more about how to actually utilize the concept of a component. How can we make these inputs into separate bricks? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Originally we said that in our source here, under our app, and to give you a little bit, a uh, quick tour, we're gonna to most likely be in the source folder most of the time. Let me go ahead and also increase that size here if I can. There we go, take one back, perfect. Go ahead and maximize that. Awesome. So let's go and take a quick look around. If I started this up to, well, we'll take a close look first. If I go into my HTML here, I see our examples here. We have inputs, our name, age, email, phone number, instead of last name, I just did age for this time. And then I have a BR here to give us separation between each line. And then we have our form. And then up here, of course, we have our header. I'm gonna actually put a header here. That's for fun, because that's what we've been talking about in our examples. And then we have a footer. I'm not gonna really put anything in my footer, just gonna have it down there so we actually can see it. Awesome. All right. So we have our HTML here. Let's go ahead and see this thing actually in action. So in order to do that, previously on other HTML pages, what you would do is you go find your HTML page and you just open it up. That is not the case with Angular. Angular is a technology that will really actually host your site in more of a realistic sense. When you just navigate to a file in your computer and that's an HTML file and opens up, that's really nice, but it's not really actually the true environment in which an HTML page will exist. That's why Angular is so nice in one of its cases, it actually gives it a more realistic environment. And even starts up a thing called, that thing called a server that we talked about. So in order to start up your Angular project, one, make sure you are actually in the directory of your Angular project. Again, I'm gonna be going into the CD Lecture 18, Angular, just like that. And now I wanna start up my server. In order to do that, I say N as in Nancy, G as in Greg, space, serve. And then I press enter. This is going to spin up a nothing. Oh, come on, what are you doing to me? Didn't really take out all my node modules. Fine, all right. If it doesn't work for you, run NPMI to get your node modules in there. Uh, it, in order to cut down on space, uh, when you post it to GitHub, it will delete all those node modules because node modules are very heavy and basically trim it all out. So when you would clone it on your machine, run that MPI first and it'll bring it all back. So let's hope that's what the problem is here. Oh, and also while I'm at it too, if you were downloading this stuff and you saw a lot of vulnerabilities there, I do just want to make this small call out and you see a lot of critical errors, don't take too much notice to it. It is okay that you see some critical vulnerabilities in the examples that we're talking about. Of course, if you get into higher app or you get into more risky applications and whenever we're in our day jobs, that's when you start taking more notice to them. But just for these examples, it's not going to pose uh, much of a threat. Do we really need to run NPM install every time you clone something. And when you clone something on your machine, you need to run it initially. Once you've done npm install, you've installed everything, you will not have to do it again, unless you change something in your package.json. It's gonna be yelling at me for a second. Blah, 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 blah. blah. All right, thank you. And G, so let's make sure that was a problem. Otherwise, if it wasn't a problem, maybe I am seeing that 8.2 issue. Oh, Grace, great question. Yeah, only run that MPMI. Sorry, buddy. Forgot that. I, I wanted to show the Git clone coming down. Just go over that so I didn't have any of this installed. Should get that there done. Hopefully, you're soon. Compiled successfully. That one. There we go. Oh, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. We are there. All right. How I knew we were there. One, it says compiled successfully. That is. What, very, one obvious uh, little sign there, but also to open your browser to localhost colon 4200. 
Now this is very, very specific and we need to make sure that we are actually doing that. So let's go ahead and hop over here. I'm gonna bring my browser over a bit, just like that. And we're gonna go to our local host, colon 4200. For this one, this is your port number. This is the port that yeah, Angular opened up to help us display our website. Let's go see this and see what we have. Awesome. All right, so localhost colon 4200 there, 4200. So as we can see, this is the HTML that we're gonna be dealing with today. I have my header up here, fill out the form for a furry friend. Say that five times fast. And then we have our form down here. Remember, our task is to put this name above our input. So let's go ahead and do that today. Now, in order to do that, I have two different ways I could approach that. Again, I could come up here and I could put a label like that. But remember, if I did this, I would have to do it for all of my text fields. Again, for four, it's not that big of an issue, but if I had 200, that becomes kind of a time consuming task. So what I wanna do is create a thing that is very general, that maybe I can customize it with other information. What I'm talking about this thing that I'm talking about general, I wanna find the repetitive piece of code in my HTML here, and I'm gonna turn it into something reusable, one of those components that we talked about briefly. Now take a close look at these lines of code. What looks repetitive? Well, if I look at all these inputs, they're fairly repetitive, as in all they are, have are input tags, and the only thing that they differ in are maybe the placeholder and then the name. So because of those two little, little side things, are the only, uh, excuse me, are the only specific things that they have to them. Everything else is very general about it. That tells me, or makes it help, or helps me identify the more general code that we could possibly turn into a component. So that was extremely long-winded for this right here is the general piece of code that we're gonna be turning into a component today. So let's go ahead and do that. For Angular, how we turn, or how do we even start creating a component? We have to run a command to do so. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna come back over here, say control, or I'm gonna stop it by saying control C for a Mac, command C, or excuse me, it's also control C for a Windows machine as well. And now I wanna create our first component. To do that, we type in ng, then generate, because we wanna create something. What do we wanna create? A component. So we say component, and then the component's name. For this one, I'll call it labeled input. I call it labeled input because we want a label on an input. So I just made an arbitrary name. And also I put a dash between them just so I don't have to read and see where each word ends to make this a little bit more, more of an approachable name. Jacob, yes, control C should be stopping ng serve. Yep. Um, if it doesn't, for whatever reason, you can try control Z, but control C is the one you should be working with. So for uh, Windows, it's the CRTL or control. Um, and then see at the same exact time. All right, so ng generate component labeled input. I press enter here, and what Angular is gonna do is, because it's extremely nice and generous, is that it's going to create all of our files for us. And it did, it created four files here, and let's go through those files that it created. I'll back over here to this code. So inside of app, I see that I have a new directory called labeled input. Inside of this directory, I have those four files that it created. Now let's go through each one real quick. We have our labeled-input.component.css. CSS is our style sheets. So if I ever wanna do any styling for my labeled inputs, I would put it in here. Let's go down to the next one. Labeled-input.component.html. This right here, is the HTML, the thing that our user will actually see on the website when we utilize this component. We haven't learned yet how we're gonna utilize it, but when we do, this is what's going to be displayed. You know HTML also. You write it just as we learned it in here. Next, we have our spec.ts. You know what a spec is. Spec is our testing files. We're not gonna be working with any of this really, so we don't need to really pay too much close attention to it. But in case you were wondering, spec is for a test, it generates those tests automatically for us, which is very nice. And then finally, we have our label-input.component.ts for TypeScript. Remember, TypeScript is just sugar-coated JavaScript. 
So in here is where we put the, like the mind or the thought process of our component. We want to do something crazy. Remember JavaScript was included in HTML so it could do something unique, extra, dynamic. We can actually interact with stuff. That's exactly how, what we can do in here and utilize TypeScript to do that. Now, if we look at this code, though, it looks a little different from what we have expected or seen in TypeScript and JavaScript. So don't worry about it. Take a deep breath, and let's take a look at it. First things first, you've already know the word component. Up here with this at tag here, this is called an annotation. The annotation component is just saying, I want to build a component. I want to take a use of Angular's awesomeness and technology to create something that's reusable. In TypeScript and Angular, like, that's cool. Use this annotation. So that's what we do. Inside this annotation, we need to provide just a little bit of information. First things first is the selector. Think of this as the name of the tag that you're going to use to reference that new component that you just created. So remember this very, very closely, app-label-input. So this is saying, OK, if I use app-label-input, I want you to use this component wherever I put this tag. And TypeScript's like, or excuse me, Angular's like, awesome, dude. What is it supposed to look like, though? It's like, OK, well, to make it work, what I want it to look like is right here in my template URL. And I say, I want it to look like whatever's inside this HTML tag, or sorry, this HTML file. So I come up to this HTML file. It's going to look exactly like it's typed in here. So it's like, cool, OK, you have HTML. But what if you want to provide some styling? What if you want to make it look pretty? Well, of course, we provide that, too the style URLs as well. So if we do want to provide that custom CSS, we can. And this is how we tell Angular where to find that to style our components. Remember, think of components just as building blocks. It just has HTML inside of it, a lot of HTML, to make that bunch of HTML reusable elsewhere in your application. So let's go ahead and utilize this now inside of our stuff. Before I do that, any questions about what we just went over? Yeah, so what exactly, like, so the, so it looks like the component, the component annotation is like, it includes like an object there. So like the, like, in it, the whole annotation, like syntax functionality, is that a part of, is that a part of JavaScript, TypeScript, or Angular? It is an Angular specific annotation. That so is if you, if you tried to, if you tried to, if you tried to run an Angular TypeScript file through the TypeScript compiler, it wouldn't know what to do with that at component part. It would get confused. It depends, but it would most likely get confused because an Angular project has a lot of dependencies that we install on our npm that you can see in your package JSON that allows it to know what this annotation is and does. So technically, yes, if you ran it on the TypeScript compiler, it would not know what to do with it. And it depends on the environment, but in most cases, no, it will not run properly. Okay, so you go went back on mute, so hopefully that answers your question, but it, it can work. That's why I didn't want to say no straight up, but, there's a lot of extra things I have to go in place in order for it to work. So in just a heads up to this component, remember, is wrapped in parentheses. This object itself is a parameter within this annotation. We'll learn more about annotations more in unit two, but I just want to introduce you really quick to this one. All right, any other questions right now in Angular before we actually get to see it actually in action? All right, I hear crickets. Let's see it in action then. We're gonna now use this component that we built and put it into our site. Remember what our site looks like? It just has this. It's just a simple form there. Now let's take a look at our labeled input.component.html. If we see it working, it should say labeled dash input works. So how can we take this component and put it into our page, the page that we see here? Well. If we remember from a few moments ago, at that form itself is down here in the app.component.html. This is where that HTML is being written. Remember, we see our inputs here, we see our name. Over in our site, we see our inputs and our name. So in here, excuse me, we can include 
this component. But how do we do it? We use, if we go back up to that label-input.component.ts, we will be using the selector again in order to reference it. So we come down to our app.component.html and we just provide that there. I'm gonna put it right here in the header. You don't have to put it in the header, you can put it anywhere you want. I'm gonna say app-labeled input, just like that. Again, see that we use that selector name and we put it into the tag. Now let's see Angular at work. If you refresh our page, and it says it can't be reached, of course, because I don't have my server running. So let's do that first. ng serve to start up our server. Psych! Thought you were gonna see it work, but nope. Forgot about that. I'm gonna compile here. All right, successfully compiled, perfect. Come back over here to 4200. And there we go, we refresh, and now we see it labeled dash input works. Awesome. We just injected this component into Angular. So I'm gonna hop back over to the code here, pause here for just a moment. Any questions on what we just saw? Any questions at all? All right. If not, then let's take it one step further. Oh, did I see somebody that I wanted to do a question? No? All right, going once, going twice. All righty, we'll move on here. So, awesome, we just got this little paragraph labeled input works, fantastic. But how does this exactly help us, Kyle? Well, we now know how to put components in there. Remember, components can be reused. So if we come back in here, and just like any element, we can reuse it as many times as we want. So if I come up here, and I wanted to post 50 of these, I'm not going to, because that'd be a lot of clicks. I come back over here, and instead of having to write a bunch of paragraphs, I'm now being able to post all of these components out to a list, just like that. What it is is it reads that component, says, oh, you want that paragraph in there, injects it in, and then allows us to see it. So what we just saw is that these components are reusable. So that's neat. So right now we only have a paragraph in there. That's really cool, but paragraph is only just one line anyway. So let's take it again one step further now. And we're actually going to take this input and provide it into this labeled input slot. So what I can do is I can now copy this. And what I'm gonna do is come up here to my component.html and paste that label input in BR into this HTML, just like that. So once I paste it in there, I'm now able to use this component anywhere. So let's go ahead and instead of putting it up in the header, let's put it right where the name should be. Just like that. Let's see what happens. Come over here, you refresh. We see that nothing really has changed. Well, that's absolutely true. Nothing has really changed because, well, we just put our code back where it was just in component form. So let's make it a little bit more obvious. Let's just delete all of this code here. Now we're gonna paste in a bunch of these. Again, what if we just wanna make a tax form? Just for fun, you guys wanna do a tax form just for fun? Wouldn't that be, yeah, dogs or taxes? Come on, you gotta choose one. All right, so for that, we see that now we are posting a bunch of components. Now, if you are still asking yourself, I really don't see the usability for this, again, pretend that we're not just doing a text box, but instead you're doing a full on header with pictures or something like that, all a very intricate HTML that you need to use throughout a bunch of pages. Not every page is just has, or sorry, not every website just has one page, they have hundreds. So we can take this component and use it anywhere. So we don't have to reuse that code. We don't have to copy and paste that code anymore. We just paste the component, literally one line, and it inserts thousands upon thousands of lines for us. So then we're just seeing a simplistic example here. Know that this can be taken to the extreme. Components from very, very recent technology. This is one of my favorite technologies that have come out. Personally, I don't use Angular. My Angular knowledge is to a point. I use another component-based technology. 
But in general, this is how tradition, or sorry, how newer or modern web applications are written. And there's also a lot of pros that we haven't even explored about Angular that are what that is the true reason or one of the big reasons why Angular and the other technologies are really taking over with these component-based systems. So components are extremely powerful. Again, they're this Lego piece. If you ever love Legos back there, you just found out how to make your own Lego brick, that thing that a kid always wanted to do, and place it anywhere to make whatever you want, instead of having to copy and paste things a thousand times. So you just cut down of making a 100-page website to years to months by just including this kind of technology in your application. So I'm gonna pause here for just one more moment. Any questions about this? Again, this is a new technology, so I understand if there are just some hesitations towards it, but throw out any questions that you have about Angular. Can I see the labeled input component one? Because I feel like I missed the part where you like link those. Yeah, so the HTML is here. Okay. Okay. To link them, you place that selector in mm -hmm. the code that you want to do. In the code where I placed it, my code was app.component.html. I okay. placed the selector tag here, which injects that HTML into it. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. And you got the selector from the component.ts. Very good. Absolutely right. The selector is right here, whatever this is. So if I change this to... Well, it's just going to be PO'd at me now, isn't it? Let's see. It does. Yeah, it gets really mad. So let's take a look at that real quick, actually. That's a really good example. So inspect. In order for it to see your errors in Angular, I do highly recommend keeping your console open. Yeah, look at all that. That is an angry Angular. So what this is saying is that it, my app-label-input does not exist. So verify this is actually a component. Well, it technically isn't component because I just changed this to input.cookie, to app labeled input cookie. So that technically does not work anymore. So if I really wanted to keep cookie in there, I would have to come up here and place cookie inside of there in every single one of them. I'm gonna do it just one time because I don't wanna go paste cookie all the way through. So we're gonna refresh that. We see that it comes back. So our selector, our selector name is really what powers that connection when we're utilizing it. Awesome. Any other questions? Anything at all? Nothing? I explained it absolutely perfectly. No one's completely confused. I, or is it like have the backwards? What? I, I could jump in a little bit, sorry. So What's I'm up? having a, a little bit of a tough time, I guess, understanding. So your selector is kind of what is always what you're pasting in to your like app.component.html section. And yes. then that gets edited in the labeled slash or dash input file. Is like what you, how you're you're kind of shaping your yeah. I think I'm saying the words wrong. How, like selectors and components. So selector is like the name of the component. Is that a good way to say it? This right here okay. correlates with your selector name. Right. So basically what this is saying is that, okay, when my compiler is running through, it's going to come here to line seven and say, okay, what in a tarnation is this? This is not an HTML element. It will then say, okay, Angular, what is this? Angular will go back over to your yeah. labeled input.component TS and say, oh, it's this selector right here. Okay. Make it look like this file here. So gotcha. label dash input dot component dot HTML. It goes in here, says, oh, inject this in there. And that's how our HTML actually gets into our form there. And is that even, would that even continue on? Because there was another like um, CSS file as a part of that too. Is that like also included in the selector? Like Absolutely. How, yeah. Right. So if you, okay. if you want to style your component you'll want to tell it how and this is how we tell it okay cool thank you yeah absolutely so i have a question one well, i mean maybe not a question a comment then so does the html that like we read now just contain a bunch of like component links per se and then all of the actual work is done in like the css file and the 
HTML file, I mean, the CSS file and the, um, like the TS file. I guess I'm curious about like, what are we seeing in the HTML? It looks like we're just going to see labels. And are you talking about labels as in this thing? Yeah, because we the no selector. longer are going to see the HTMLs. Yeah, we'll just see all of the selectors, right? So remember, in your forms or in your website, not everything is reusable. There's going to be very custom pieces, like as in just this header here. So what, you're, what I'm trying to say is that you're going to see a mix. You'll see a mix of custom selectors from Angular mixed with typical HTML. So you're going to see a mix of them. We'll only use these selectors when we find a piece of code that's reusable that we'll want to use throughout the application or multiple times. So that's what it cuts down on. If you just do a, you don't want to do a component for everything. I guess it's a good, good note. You don't want to do a component for just about everything. Like if you're just doing a custom header there, you don't have to do a component for it. So you will see a mix. Great question there. If you, Kyle. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah, John, what's up? Feeding off of uh, just, just your most recent comment. So, so we just saw like, you know, you had like a bunch of different um, inputs like names, phone number, whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you said in this, then in this case, would we make the component as the input like alone and then um, I guess make the, I guess like the, the names of those inputs as like a separate and use those use just use just the input component like would that be as kind of a um a way to um or, or like go about doing this i guess if you were to do it efficiently. i might not have followed there so we would include our input only within the component so only within our app label component here so where else did you right. want to include the input okay so i mean like because 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 in the beginning we had like we had several different inputs with names and phone numbers and emails and whatnot, right? Right. So then that in this case then would we just make the like the blank input as a component and you and um and then write the I guess the, the name, I guess I guess whatever you want to call it, like headers or the names of those inputs like as separate from the uh the, from the component. I like your question there and I'm actually going to finish at the very end. We need to customize this component depending on what we want to show. So I'll answer your question in just a moment, but what we're going to want to do is customize each of our labeled inputs to whatever labels out there. Like you said, name, age, email, et cetera. So we're going to learn a, a very, very end, uh, how to exactly do that. So if I have your question correct, hold on for just a moment. Okay. Awesome. And then I, Jacob, did you ask a question? I saw someone else's name pop up. Yeah, it was, it was a similar question though, so that'll probably get covered. Okay, let's go ahead and do that then, because we are getting to the end of time here, and I'll take more questions at the very end. So what I'm going to do is take away our dash cookie. I'm sorry. Input there, and then we're going to hop back. Oh, we're going to save that. Hop back over here, and we're going to take away cookie there. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to go back over here and paste this in now. What do we have? We have three more there we go save that come back over to our form refresh this and we'll take a quick look well first things first name isn't on the very very top so let's go ahead and do that also let's put a quick little div there or even a br just to probably be cleaner there we go save that comes down look at that we're getting closer so our names at the top we have our placeholder there still that's fine we can get rid of our placeholder that's okay let's do that too so we're getting a little bit closer there. Awesome. We're almost able to take a lunch a little bit early, but our issue is, is that name is still there. Name is there for four or for the top one and the three others. So for this, we wanted age, phone number, and email in there. So how exactly can we do that with these components? We're able to reuse this, but it seems very specific to name. So with this, it's actually getting a little bit outside of what the book goes into. So this is an extra, like this is extra bit. So if your mind is full right now, feel free to turn it off. But I'm going to show a little bit why these components are so awesome. You can customize them as well. Um, real quick before I do that, can you explain the server part? Is that just to make the page go live or update? Joe, yes, it absolutely is. So the server is there to 
to refresh the page and also host it, which means it makes it make it be visible. Why I say it's hosting it is because it's actually at a port at a IP address. Localhost is an IP address. And so at this port number two. So if you go to google.com, Google, as you know, is an IP address through the DNS and it's at port 80. So when I say hosting it, I mean, it's actually running a server that shows your page for you. So it's a little bit different than actually running or just clicking on our HTML page and viewing it just there in the browser. So Joe, hopefully that helps out a little bit. That will go back a little bit into our networking stuff that we talked about briefly. All right. So let's go ahead and fill or make this form a little bit more customizable. So what we can do <clears throat> is be able to pass in attributes into our tags. You already know these. These are attributes. That's an attribute. That's an attribute. We can provide information to our tags. This is a normal thing. So we see it all the time in HTML. The same goes with our components, or excuse me, our components are here for tags. A small disclaimer, again, I am not versed in agile best practice, or not agile, Angular best, pr best practices. So if there's any Angular developers out there and I offend you with my uh, approach, I apologize. Please direct message me and tell me the uh, correct way. But this is what I found that correlates a lot with the technology that I utilize. So in here, what we're gonna do is provide it information through attributes. An attribute I'm gonna provide here is called just data and I'm gonna call it uh, whatever I wanna do after. Let's say the label, data label. In here, I'm gonna say name. And then I'm gonna paste it on all of these and say, okay, what do I want my data, by the way, is a start of a very traditional attribute that says I want to provide custom, a custom attribute. I wanna provide a custom piece of information. This is available also in vanilla or traditional HTML. So you say data dash whatever you want. So data dash whatever you want. So in this case, name, I'm gonna say age, I'm gonna say email, I'm gonna say phone number. Save phone, there we go, save that. So I come over back over to my form, refresh this. I see that nothing has changed. I'm providing information, but no one's taking it in. So no, I'm not gonna see any changes here. I just provided that information. How do we actually connect it? That's what we're about to see there. So what I provided here was again, that attribute. So what I need to do is tell my component that I want this attribute to be shown. So the next thing I need to do is go up to my TypeScript and say, I want you to find this attribute and we're gonna use it eventually. So that's what we're gonna do here next. So what I'm gonna be doing here is that in the constructor you can pass, or it passes the reference to the element that it's building. When I say reference to the element that it's building, I mean this thing, whatever this is, it passes its reference, the whole object of the thing. It's like, here is the thing I built. That's what we're putting up here. So I'll say ELM, and then I'm gonna put the type. The type is, and you do not have to remember this, I pinky promise, remember this is just extra credit here, element ref. I didn't. Okay, there we go. I didn't put it. Perfect. It imports it from Angular there. And now in here, you know that in the constructor, this is where we set our class variables. The class variable I want to set here is maybe just something that says um, my tag. I'm paste it as a string. And right now, I'm just going to set it to empty quotes there. I'm going to say my tag name or something like that. I don't know. Something descriptive. So we need to assign this thing to something. So what I need to do is I'm gonna say my tag name equals, and I can leave this actually for that one. I need to actually get my value out of this element. Remember the element is that tag. You've seen this before a little bit, elm dot native element. Don't worry about that too much. That just means your traditional HTML element. And I want to get the attribute Data dash label. Remember, data dash label is what's on this component.html. Right here, data dash label. So I was like, hey, can you grab me this please from this element? 
And hopefully, fingers crossed, TypeScript's gonna be like, sure, why not? And then save it to my tag name here. Awesome. So let's go ahead and save this, come back over here and make sure Angular's still happy with us. It looks like it is, but still nothing is showing up. So, so far, we have provided information, what our labels want to be as the attribute. As the attribute here. Step one, now we need to tell our component to get this information in from the attribute. And that's what we did here. We got the information in, but what are we missing? Let's actually show the information. And that's what we're gonna do next. Let's actually show whatever my tag is set up here, my tag name. So if I hop over to my HTML, I want this thing to display that information that's within my TS file, specifically this class variable here called my tag name. So in the HTML, now this is where it gets a little bit different. For Angular, we can inject information in here from our TS class. To do that, we do it this way. Two curly brackets, and then the name of the variable. You might have seen this in some of your exercises for this section. This is how we include information from the TypeScript class into your actual components HTML. So we save that, come back over here, and we refresh. Now take a close look. We have successfully completed our data flow from when we provided the information to getting to the information and then showing the information in that three-step process. Now, one extra thing I'll show you is that here with our name, we are not able to do that. So we want to provide the name and the ID to be something specific. So what I can do is that I want to, my ID to be set to whatever my tag name is. So in order to tell this thing to get that class variable out of the class in an attribute, remember, I'm getting a class variable out, or sorry, I'm getting my class variable and I'm setting it to something inside of an attribute, inside of an attribute. So why we, or when we do that, we put brackets around the attribute name to say, hey, the next thing I'm about to tell you, go find it in my class. It's like, okay, what is it? and say my tag name. That's what I want you to go find and set my ID to. So I save that, come back over here. We're not gonna really see anything extra. So for an added bonus, I'm gonna go and put our placeholder back in just to show that it does actually work. So our placeholder is going to be my tag name. Save that. And now we see our placeholder comes back with all of that information in there. Now, to show that I'm not lying to you, last thing, I'll take out these square brackets around placeholder, come back over, refresh, and now goes to my tag name. That is not correct. We need that variable out of TypeScript in the attribute. Again, to do that, square brackets around the attribute name. Awesome, comes back, we're all good. All right, deep breath, deep breath. That was a lot. That was a lot, especially for a Monday, and a gloomy Monday that is too. So, to give you all a great present, we're all done. Look at that. So I'm gonna pause it here just for a moment. Any questions about what we just saw about Angular or anything that we talked about this entire lecture? Can you review the part where you went to bash to get, um, I don't even know how to phrase the question, but when you put your extra label input into app, you did something in Bash that I missed. To put our extra, to put my extra label. So only thing in Bash that I ran was the ng serve, which starts up our server. Are you looking to generate a new component? Yes. So, yes. Okay. So that one was ng generate component and then the, whatever the app name is, or the component name is. So it'd be like that. Awesome. So I'm curious what like platform you work in if you said you didn't work in Angular. So I work in a, cl a closer-ish cousin, maybe a third cousin twice removed, uh, it's called React. So that's the technology I use. 
So it's a, it's a component based on uh, technology as well. So do all components, oh. oh, sorry, I can wait. You're, you're okay. I was just wondering if all component based like um, structures follow this general pattern or if Angular is like an outlier. Everyone has a different architect uh, architecture. So any technology going there, it's gonna be different. Even with different languages, they're gonna have different syntaxes, different architectures as well. So does it, is it a lot, or does this look like React? Not, not necessarily, but it also has similarities. So yes and no. It all depends on how similar you find it, but the general direction and concept is still, is still there. So to answer your question, yes and no. There are big differences, but there's also big similarities. So it really is fairly, fairly close. Good question. I think I heard another one. Any other questions? Yeah. There? Yeah. So um, I just had a real quick question. I, I found out where I was going wrong at, and I think I created my, like the, the new version of like the app or whatever, like a new instance. I created it in like the like the main folder instead of the actual Electra 18 Angular subfolder. And whenever I try to move it into that folder, it will not let me. Do you have any advice on how to do that? Just generate a new one. Just generate a new one? Yep. Find the correct location, generate it there. You're gonna have a lot less headache. Okay. Yeah, the generation does a little bit other stuff under uh, in the back of the in the back back of the uh, oh my gosh, I'm just like behind the scenes. That's what I was thinking of behind the scenes. So yes, just generate a new one there where you actually want to do it. Whenever I whenever I did do that, it said a new command requires to be run outside of a project, but a project definition was found at the Lecture like 18 Angular. Okay, it might be trying to help you there. Just Disregard it. I mean, take it with a grain of salt. Disregard it, though. Hop into your lecture 18 and try to generate your component there. Okay. Uh, uh, can I ask you a question? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, real quick. So, right, so these will, will be um, uploaded to your um, GitHub, right? Uh, these changes. Yep, they'll be up there. Yeah, and and also lastly, like, so what, I guess what we did is so we. So we made the um, attributes of our component customizable. Is that the right way to put it? Um, yeah, the components are, or yeah, the, the general pieces of our component are now customizable with, with this attribute that, that we're using. Yep. Can I see the label.input.component.ts file for a moment? Sure. Thank you. And yeah, once lecture's done, we will. I'll go ahead and uh, commit all this stuff up there, so we'll all have it. All right. Any final questions, anybody? Before we have to hop off here. All right. In that case, everyone, I hope you all enjoyed Angular there. <laughs>